Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the last part of the amazing document that Andy has sent to a few of us. Obviously the last couple of ones we've seen of how Whitney and her sister AH, they conspired and they purged themselves with a lot of stuff that they did. Taking photographs, taking three separate ones but saying they were all done within a matter of seconds. Even though items are misplaced, certain items have been moved and also the metadata which has been changed. But what we're going to take a look at now, ladies and gentlemen, is the plausibility of what they are. Basically, the implausibility. So this is what we got. Implausibility and further evidence. This is page 24 of 38, so we're going to get through these now. There are many total implausible aspects to AH's incredible testimony. She would ask that we believe that Mr. Depp would... Cut four lines of powder, then leave them to scatter. Do four uh, lines of powder at one time, and then cut those lines on the side of the table away from where he is sitting. Carry an applicator as his preferred method. Been drinking from two separate glasses of whiskey at the same time, but yet not drink from either during the time the photos were taken. Roll himself a cigarette and then just leave it on the table. Then return only to place the still unlit cigarette in an ashtray and then still not smoke the cigarette during the time which the photos were taken. In respect of A.H.'s photographic narrative that Mr. Depp would do this powder at one go, Whitney gave contradictory testimony in a witness statement. So, this is coming from uh, Whitney. Nathan came inside at one point to try to help and try to intervene by removing the whiskey or powder. When that didn't work, each time Johnny would make himself a line of powder. Nathan would ask if he could have it. Although the story about Nathan Holmes asking for Mr. Depp's powder is likely to be untrue, Whitney's testimony does at least establish that Mr. Depp would only take a single line of powder at any one time. This raises the question that if the, these were not staged, then who snorted the other three lines of powder? This further gives compelling evidence of the staging of the scene and further proves A.H. perjured herself in giving false testimony. No claim of having been struck. Now, this is when it gets really juicy. Even though we've already had 24 pages of juiciness, this just takes it up a notch and just, ooh, this is fine dining. In a final witness statement submitted the day before the trial started, she stated, I now realise that the incident I'd initially described as having taken place on the 8th of March, 2013, took place on the 22nd of March, 2013. Two weeks later, there was a separate incident on the 8th of March, 2013. However, on the witness stand, she testified that the part of the 22nd of March incident where she was this causing from her lip to spatter on the wall actually took place on the 8th of March. It was therefore not a separate incident, as she claims. Now, we're going to take a look at the uh, photos that she's had here with Ian McLagan. So during cross-examination, Miss Laws presented her with a photograph showing her with Ian McLagan at the Sweetson Studios. Miss Laws claimed that uh, the travel documents determined a photograph to have been taken on the 23rd of March, to which the defence did not necessarily agree, and that the photo showed no injury to her whatsoever. As you can see by here, it is totally fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing there, nothing looks out of place. It just, literally the entire face looks fine. There's nothing there. So, although not seeing anything to her face, she then suddenly saw an injury to her lip and saw that her lip was swollen. No, I cannot see any injury to my face. No injury at all. I cannot really tell if my lip is bruised. There might be an injury on that. There might be. To my lip, if you look at my bottom, it looks swollen to me. It looks swollen. My bottom lip does. Does it? Yes, it looks swollen to me. What is clear from her attentive claim of a swollen lip is that she did not know what injury she had allegedly sustained, having moved the uh, spatter to the 8th of March. Miss Laws further questioned uh, her as to how the injury was caused, but was interrupted by Miss Waz and the question was never asked again. It is my fault. It was the wrong question. I should have been more specific with you. Could you just say what it was that Mr. Johnny Depp had done to you? Physically, what action caused that mark? 
In further cross-examination, Ms Laws put to AH that she was compelled to claim some sort of injury due to what her sister had testified, which is what we've seen and which is what we've uh, gone through the entire document. Thank you. So you have to maintain, do you not, that there was some sort of injury because this is what your sister says? No, it's because he did it a lot in March. Judge Nicole, in his ruling, found that the photograph is not sufficiently clear for me to make a decision one way or the other in this regard. There was an allegation that Mr. Depp held the dog out of the window and joked about dropping the dog. It is immaterial to the substantive allegation that Mr. Depp had done this the night before. Overall, I conclude that Mr. Depp did do this as she and the defendants have alleged in Incident 2. Yeah, because her saying, oh, I can't remember, oh yeah, he did this, yeah, that's great, Mr. Judge. That's exactly what you've done. Having moved the uh, spatter to the 8th of March, the only remaining allegation was that Johnny had grabbed her hard, shook her, shoved her. Mr. A.H. had given no further testimony of having been stuck by uh, Mr. Depp during the events of the 22nd. We know that struck you. What Miss Laws and the rest of Mr. Depp's legal team seemed to have completely missed was a high-resolution photograph taken by her at 1.22 on the 23rd of March 2013. This is according to Metadata. Unlike the photos of her and Mr. McLagan, there can be no dispute as to the date of the photo, other than the possible altering of the metadata, or as to the photo proving, irrefutably, that she had not suffered anything to her lip the day before. So, yeah, that's all fine, if you ask me, but she does have the bruise there, obviously, but this is where we get interesting. This is further supported by the fact that having taken the photo, she then sent the image to her mother in a text message complaining only of this bruise on her arm that happened two weeks ago today. There were simply no other injuries to herself that she could photograph and attribute to Mr. Depp, including to her lip. The photograph and subsequent text message gives further irrefutable proof that she perjured herself in leading the court to believe that this happened on the 22nd of March 2013. However, the judge seemingly believed that A.H. to have been struck on that day based on no evidence, other than her testimony, he did it a lot in March. So now we go to A.H.'s narrative and confession. So, now we're coming to a lot of text messages, ladies and gentlemen, and this is just mind-blowing. Right, I'm going to blow it up a little bit more for you guys so you can see. There we go. I hope you guys better. So we're on 250% maxed in. So, 22nd and 23rd of March, Saturday, Sunday, AH exchanged a swath of texts with her mother, Paige, during which she built on her narrative a Mr. Depp's uh, drink and uh, this fueled rage, causing her mother to fear for her safety. Dealing with Johnny's spiral. It's terrible, Mom. I don't know what to do. Throughout their text exchange on the 22nd of March, she allowed her mother to believe that she was alone with Johnny at his property and in danger from his rage, whereby Paige urged her to go to the motel anywhere that's safe until it passes. So, at uh, 17.20, so 5.20, get away. Go somewhere else. Tell him you love him totally and this is the only way to protect that love. Come home. Go to a motel. Anywhere that's safe until it passes. You have to remove yourself from that spiral. Not his love, but please leave. Say I have an emergency if you need to. Please. So, she did not mention that she is in her own home with her sister, nor does she mention that Mr. Depp's assistant and the driver, who were both waiting in the car. Both of them were there. 1902, while on her way to the film set, she texts her mother to continue her narrative of Mr. Depp's behaviour. Again, she does not mention that she is safely in the car with Johnny, along with her sister, Mr. Holmes, and the driver. He's nuts, Mom. Violent and crazy. I am heartbroken that this is who I love. Then, at 8.40, while at the film set, she confessed to her mother that she had not, in fact, been uh, done by Mr. Depp during her argument of the previous night. It's okay, Mum. He's not done this with me. He's just even raging in general. And the crazy mood swings and binges are really difficult for me to handle. Less than half an hour later, she then doubled down on her previous confession by again asserting, I'm okay physically. Johnny didn't do this or anything last night. I told him that would be it if he did and it worked last night. But I'm scared by what I see and who I see now. It's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on a binge. 
The following day, the 23rd of March, she effectively reiterated her confession in a text to her mother at 1.22, which included the photo taken at the same time, showing an injury not from the previous evening, but from an alleged this two weeks ago, which is the one we saw. Five minutes later, Paige sent a very concerning reply of, Oh my baby. Yeah, oh my baby. During the course of two days, she had twice expressly confessed to her mother that Mr. Depp had not done anything bad towards her on the nights of the 21st, 22nd of March, and in another text message, had sent her mother a photograph demonstrating the scene. However, on the witness stand on day 13 of the UK trial, she claimed her confessions to be false and that she had made them in the belief that her mother was about to tell her father of this and that she feared her father's reaction. No, I just did not want her to tell my dad as she was looking like she was able or about to do. In his judgement, Judge Nicole gave no reason as to why he dismissed her confessions. He simply describes A.H.'s explanation as to why she would not tell her father and then cites that A.H. had not told her mother the truth. In her re-examination, A.H. explained that she feared her father would react bad towards Johnny Depp if she told him that Mr. Depp had done this. In her evidence, A.H. said that she had told her not told her mother the truth excuse me, and that Johnny had indeed been horrible towards her. Then, in his conclusion, Judge Nicole stated that Overall, I conclude that Mr. Depp did do this to her as Sheena defenders have alleged in Incident 2. Yeah. Judge Nicole simply dismissed her contemporaneous confessions in favour of her admission in court that she had lied to her mother when making those same confessions. During her testimony in court on day 13, she described her father as an alcoholic and this, who was very bad towards people throughout their marriage until she passed away. My father was horrible to my mother growing up. They really loved each other, but he was very angry towards her until the end. They were married until she passed away. My dad had struggled. My dad had struggled with everything his entire life. He is an addict and an alcoholic, and he was very bad, but I love him very much. However, it is clearly established by AH's text exchange that she had absolutely no compunction in telling her mother of Johnny being horrible towards her. 1902 on that day, the 22nd of March, less than two hours before confessing that he's not been horrible towards her, she sent a text message to her mother claiming Johnny to be this and crazy. She did not suggest or ask that her mother not tell her father. This is a heartbroken, this is who I love. Then in a text message to her mother at 11.42, the day after her confessions, she asserted that Johnny made her father look like a saint when he falls off the wagon. Her mother's reaction is clear. This will be a nightmare for you, uncontrolled. He makes dad look like a saint when he falls off the wagon. God damn. The inference of uh, A.H.'s text giving her court testimony was very clearly that she had suffered far more bad stuff at the hands of Johnny than her mother had suffered from her father. And only one hour, 40 minutes after sending the above text, she took and sent her mother the photograph showing the bruise on her arm that she claimed was caused by Johnny two weeks prior. She did not complain of anything from the night before, nor did the photo show any other injuries. These last two texts and photos shown above were both sent by her the day after she confessed to her mother that Johnny had not done anything towards her, and hence wholly conflicts her explanation that her confessions were false. Again, it is very evident that A.H. had no compunction in telling and showing her mother photographs of what supposedly happened upon her by Johnny, and she did so without any concern as to her mother telling her father the same. Throughout their tax exchange, Paige had not expressed any intention in telling her husband. She had only asked that A.H. do so. In summary, why would A.H. make false confessions in order to deter her mother from informing her father, and then the following day send her mother a photograph showing a large bruise caused by Johnny towards her, and also tell her mother that her father was like a saint compared to Johnny? Why did A.H. not instruct her mother to simply not tell Dad? What is even more crucial in debunking her testimony that she had falsely confessed is that it was in fact her mother who was the young one to express concern about her father's reaction should he find out. So, at last, oh sorry, as late as of uh, 
3.19 on the 23rd of March, Page informed her daughter that her father had texted Mr. Depp, but that he was not aware of the situation. She feared that anything might set him off, and that if he knew of this, then his text would be very different. He texts Johnny asking him to check on you, let me know if there's any reaction. At this point, I'm afraid anything might set him off. Your dad knows nothing or the text would be very different. He was just texting his bro. This text was one of the last to be sent by Paige over those two days, and it gives good evidence that it was Paige, not A.H., who was the one concerned of the father's reaction, and that she never had any intention of telling him. Now we're going into confusing and conflicting stories. We have just hit 15 minute mark, and I'm, guys, we're going to power through this. I'm so happy that you're still here. For those who have uh, reached this long, it's going to be a little bit of a long one. I do apologise uh, straight away. So, Whitney was not called to the property. In her declaration, 10th of April 2019, she testified that she and Mr. Depp's team had asked her sister Whitney to come over to try to intervene. Johnny's team and I asked my sister Whitney to come over to try to intervene with him, which she did. At some point after she left, he resumed his fight. She further supported this claim in her first witness statement, 15th of December 2019, where she testified that Johnny had required Whitney at the property. Sometime in the afternoon, Johnny said something about my sister, Whitney, so she came over to try to help. She was a bit of a buddy to him at the time. Then it goes on to Whitney's uh, statement. I lived with Amber at the time. I had been out of the house and I remember someone calling me to come home from work to try to help deal with Johnny and Johnny and I were really close at that time. 1508, however, she sent a message to her sister, which is the one... Let me know before you get here. Johnny is over still and we're fighting. So please don't come in yet. It's kind of nasty but winding down. Why would you send that message if you've asked for her to come over and help? Yeah. So it is evident from the text that although Whitney was indeed on her way back to the property, she was clearly not expecting Johnny to still be there on her arrival. Similarly clear that Whitney had not been asked to come over to help or otherwise in having been told to wait outside. The text suggests also that Whitney was not aware that A.H. and Johnny had previously been fighting. In Whitney's testimony, I lived with her at the time I had been out of the house, suggests that she was away from the property during the overnight argument, but further raises the question as to whether she was on her way back home from work or simply from the place she had stayed the previous night. Now, she was not at home. In her witness statement, Whitney testified that although she had returned home from the film set, she did not see A.H. for a few days, as she had stayed over somewhere else from that night. I then went home, but she stayed at so-and-so. I didn't get a chance to talk to her in detail at the time about a discussion with Christy or what had happened with Johnny before I had arrived at the house. This all happened before I knew there was anything going on. I didn't see her for a few days after this because she stayed over so-and-so's place and didn't come home. This is crucial evidence, as it's placed A.H. away from her property, not only that night, but for the next few days. Likely be verified by the redacted person location. In stark contradiction, A.H. had sent a text to her mother claiming to have been home that night and to have had first peaceful night for weeks, after having locked the deadbolts. He's been in my house for weeks now, every night. Last night I locked the deadbolts on accident and fell asleep. So it was my first peaceful night. But she wasn't there, ladies and gentlemen. There's no obvious reason why Whitney would lie as to the whereabouts of her that night and over the next few days. Her claim simply does not bolster any possible concocted story of the event of that day or evening. Whitney would also likely remember the daughter being deadbolted when she left the property. Whitney's testimony not only proves that the stream of text messages sent by her to her mother that night and the following day all took place away from her home but underlines A.H.'s development of the very hoax that Miss F claimed she had set about from the start. So then we got this here. Unless uh, Whitney gave false testimony, then the photograph taken by her at 122 on the 23rd of March was either not taken at her home, or she sent her mother an old photo that she found on her phone and simply altered the metadata accordingly just prior to court. Easily done through an app, which there is, we've seen them done on stream. There's 6 dollars on the App Store here in the UK. The photo was not entered in evidence until three days before the court hearing commenced, which we have that one there. So, there was no whiskey bottle. So in the witness statement, Whitney uh, testified that when she came home on the 22nd of March, the place was a mess. Johnny was at the kitchen with lines of powder and an empty bottle of whiskey. 
but there's no bottles of whiskey. Came home, walked into a mess, Johnny was sat in the kitchen with lines of powder and an almost empty bottle of whiskey in front of him. Her testimony encompassed three crucial aspects of the photos, which were given in evidence by A.H., those being the lines of powder, the chair in which she was sitting, and the almost empty bottle of whiskey in front of him. But there's nothing there. So as evidence, she saw the photo before giving a statement, trying to pin it all on Johnny. What she did not realise was given a statement was that the glass vessel in front of Johnny's seat that she mistook for an almost empty bottle of whiskey was in fact a third full glass of whiskey. This can be seen in the adjacent photograph and also entered into evidence. That one there. Now we go, Miss Was positively and categorically identified the glass herself as almost a bottle of whiskey. So this is what we got. We are going to skip into the paragraphs now, guys. She was presented with a complete mess to the kitchen. There were lines of powder on the worktop and an almost empty bottle of whiskey. I think you said you were drinking whiskey at this time. Miss Waz then conclusively identifies the bottle and its location as seen by Whitney by pointing it out in the photograph to Johnny who then responded with the following. We can see the bottle. Can you see the bottle on the top? Just to the left of your logoed cup or whatever it is. Do you see it just next to the newspaper in front of the newspaper? Yes ma'am I do. It looks like another glass to me. Which it is. Everyone who looks at the photo, it's a glass, it's not a bottle. Having failed to convince Johnny that the glass was in fact a bottle, Miss Waz then further attempted to pin Mr. Depp to the stage photograph scene that Whitney was allegedly confronted with when she arrived. When Whitney arrived, as I have said, she was confronted with a lot of mess, but she was also able, uh, she was also confronted, excuse me, by whiskey and lines of powder on the kitchen table, which we can clearly see in this photograph. No, you can't because there's no bottle. God damn it, Miss Waz, you're an idiot. It is apparent that neither Miss Waz nor Whitney had seen or were aware the photograph showing the bottle to be a glass. What is crucial, however, is that the photograph on which Miss Waz and Whitney relied did not include the empty bottle of whiskey or anywhere in the photo. Insisted, you know, pinning Mr. Depp to the stage to seeing Miss Waz pinned Whitney to her own lie. Whitney is again caught in a lie and shown to have concocted a story around an almost empty bottle of whiskey that never existed. Now we're going into the doctoring of the metadata, which we will skip a few things, but as you can see, you know, the adjacent photo, 122 on 23rd of March. Within that same minute, she sent it in a text to her mother claiming the bruise had been from two weeks ago, being in March the 9th, the day after the 8th of March incident. It is somewhat suspect, though, that not implausible, that she could have taken and then posted the image within the same minute. But, this is what we got. So, remember now, this is uh, two weeks ago, that's how bad the bruise was on March 23rd. But, here, Saturday the 16th of March, seven days before, which photos were taken on the 15th of March. Yeah, there's nothing on her arm. Nothing there. Her face is all fine and so is her arms. These are photos published by the Mail Online and Funray. The celebrity's website also published several photos of her, including the one shown below, under the title, A.H. and Jeans Leaving Earth Cafe in L.A. March the 14th. Everything is fine. All photos taken after the alleged date of everything that happened, and there's nothing there. So, why only photograph the front? This all started over with he tried burning the photo, well, the painting by his ex. Which is kind of interesting because I got a video on that later on which we're going to uh, look out in a few days' time. So keep keep your eyes peeled. It's regarding uh, Tasha, her ex, and people who are on Johnny's side. So, a agent of various testimony claimed that the painting by her ex-partner was the spark that caused the argument overnight and into the 22nd of March. The painting that Mr. Ebb attempted to set a light to during his rage. So, testified the painting was moved to the garage, which is all leaky, and if you look... The immediate question is why did she not take a photograph of the alleged damage, which you can't see anything there. It also seems strange that she would store the same painting she claimed to have saved from being set alight against a clearly water-damaged wall in her garage. Under cross-examination, she described the damage to the painting. Again, what damage, if any, was there in the painting? Minimal damage to the left-hand side, back mostly, to the wooden frame that supports the canvas, and to the back lower side of the canvas. You could see where he attempted to burn it. But he was, luckily, he was inebriated enough to not have much success. And they do go on to say, why would they, you know, why do you set fire to the back of a hanging painting? But not only would far greater damage be caused by burning the front, but it would also have been much easier to, or to do so rather than to somehow lift the painting away with one hand while trying to set lighter to the back. 
She had several years leading up to the UK trial in which to photograph the alleged damage to the back of the painting, yet only photographed the front. Likely reason she did not photograph the alleged damage is because there was no damage to the photograph. Now we're coming to the hoax theory, which is amazing. In his findings on Instant 3, Judge Nicole commented, When Mr. Depp was asked about this email, he said that this was a hoax. He said that she was building up a dossier at an insurance policy for later. Excuse me. This email was written in June 2013, three years before they separated. That would have been a very long time for her to concoct a plot. While theoretically possible, I do not accept that was the case. A recurring theme in Mr. Depp's evidence was that she had constructed a hoax. Now he just keeps going on about the hoax. And Miss Waz in her closing submissions, which is to reject the hoax or insurance policy thesis, to put her in Johnny's will. That's what the plan was, personally. That's what I think. And a lot of other people we've been talking to think exactly the same. Now, it just goes on about the uh, scene of what Andy has done. And I just want to thank Andy ever so much because this has just been so, so good. It's just absolutely amazing. And before we do finish, because we are coming up to 27 minutes, which, guys, I really do apologise for keeping you here this long, but this is now over and done with. We've gone through it. And so, you know, it's 38 pages, which is a lot of stuff. And this is what Andy has put down as the last uh, sentence. In her final mocking gesture, A.H. could not resist moving the Keith Richards CD to ensure that its title remained in picture with her confessional message of her intentions towards Johnny. Robbed blind. That's what we got, guys, and I'm ever so thank you for still being here. It's been amazing to go through these documents. I'm pretty sure as well that Andy is going to be doing a lot more as well, so we will be getting more over the next coming months. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for sticking around. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon.